Hello and welcome to another episode of Soul Nectar Show, that show that explores all things essence. And we love storytelling on this show. We love to sit around the campfire together and share our stories of transformation and awakening and realizations about what we are and who we are and what we're doing and have fascinating conversations. And today is going to be a fascinating conversation. I'm your host, Carrie Hummingbird, and I love helping people to take that sacred journey and to guide and mentor them along the way because I get to sneak peek over their shoulder and get to, you know, experience all the cool stuff that happens to them. And that's a pretty awesome job. So I say yes to that. And today I'm really fortunate to have with us Andy Lopez, who is the invisible gardener. Living in the secluded hills of Malibu Canyon is a man known as the Invisible Gardener. With a title like that, uh, some confusion is inevitable. Could he be playful? An elf-like man who comes down from the canyon at dawn to sprinkle dew all over the ground before others awaken? Or is simply a wonderfully unobtrusive groundskeeper who literally fades into the landscape while dutifully taking care of the foliage? Actually, as Andy Lopez explains, he is not the invisible gardener at all. Nature is. He's just one of the helper, helpers that, uh, that she has employed for her uh, growth and her maintenance and her love. And, and you know, so we're really going to learn a lot today because Andy's got a very interesting life experience and he's been a minister and he's an artist and he's the author of how to heal the earth in your spare time. And he's also got a new book called Don't Panic, It's Organic. And so, you know, Andy is a very interesting person and we're gonna discover just how interesting he is. We're gonna have a great conversation today. So I welcome you, Andy, to the show, welcome. I, I uh, by the way, I, I'm very, uh, I knew I was gonna connect with you a long time ago because your energy is so wonderful. And you know how we got together, right? Because it took another person, Deborah, to connect, you know. To connect us, yes. And, and so I had known you before, but I was confused because Deborah was turning me back onto you again. So it's kind of... <laughs> well, I'm glad that you listened the second time that they said, hey, connect with Carrie. <laughs> 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 so tell us a little bit about, you know, how you're, you've got a really long, beautiful, amazing journey. And... Uh, in this lifetime. In this lifetime, <laughs> in this, so this, lifetime. <laughs> this broadcast could go so many directions. I'm not going to go back too far because it's kind of like in the beginning. No, not, in the not beginning, that. there was the word <laughs> <laughs> light came in. So somewhere along the way. So what we want to really talk about is, you know, this journey of awakening, this journey of, of figuring out who you are and your soul purpose and what it is that you're here to do. And so let me, let me give explain us some relative something. highlights around that. <laughs> let me explain, let me ex explain <laughs> okay. to you something. Let me explain to you something interesting. Can, is, is my voice okay? Because I yes, it is. I always hear my voice in my head, so I don't know what's going on. But let me explain to you something interesting. So, my mother, on my mom's side, she's from her family is from Yugoslavia. They're a traveling gypsy band, okay, a gypsy group. They were uh, some religion. They had to leave because of our that friend Hitler guy. So they went to Puerto Rico and they converted into a Catholic. They were Catholic. Right, and my on my dad's side, they're from Spain, the plains of Spain, sailors, all this stuff, and that's another story too. Because I just did a genealogy thing, and you're not going to believe what they're saying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's another story. We can do time on that. But the bottom line is, I said my mother taught me because as a gypsy, uh, and she, she's a. Uh, I don't know if you ever heard of the Santera religion. It's called yes. Santera. Yes. Well, the world headquarters is in Miami, Florida. And my mom was basically the head priestess. And so she, as a kid, she taught me all the different, because that's handed down from being a traveling gypsy, right? You know, uh, I have, a, I created my own deck, a tarot decks. I do readings, do past life readings, or all the whole thing, right? And people used to come to her and say, okay, uh, it would be Spanish or whatever, because you know it's it's a mixture of Christianity and Buddhism, okay, <laughs> the two together. Which is so uh, interesting. Like, how do those two to, things go together? They used, to, they used oh, I can explain it to you. They used to come to her and say, "Okay, I'm being cursed." And she say, "Okay," and they would get her get her a chicken. They would cut the chicken. Here's the chicken, and all this stuff, and she would remove the curse. But then she would say, "Let him do it," and she would point at me. I said, "What?" <laughs> And there's a tradition that the firstborn male 
of the high priestess usually ends up, if I was like, even a couple hundred years ago, I would be the king of that traveling gypsy band, okay? I would inherit it as a king, right? So they say, he, he let him do it. I said, no, mom, I'm not gonna, I don't need to kill the chicken. I said, oh, I'll tell I don't want to kill the chicken. How old were oh. you? Oh, uh, my first remembrance is in a seven or eight or even maybe younger, if I'm not sure now. Because I see my mom used to send me to, it's called, basically it's a, it's a Spanish version of a rock shop. Okay, because it, it, you still see them around in LA and any Spanish places. They sell holy water, they sell all kinds of stuff, you know, that you go in there. I forget what you call, you know, uh, what you call it in English, but it's a, uh, like a, a, it's like a medicine store for, <laughs> for people, right? So my mom used to say, I want you to get two, two spider legs, so, you know, the usual witch's brew kind of thing, right? Uh, I want you to get this or that. So I would go to the store, to the rock shop, and I would say, okay, my mom wants a little ruby, she wants an emerald, she wants uh, some spider legs, a frog toad, you know, those that give it to my mom, you know, and she would make these batches of stuff for people, and she would basically make a poultice and give it to her, take this back, or wear this, or drink this, or, <laughs> and I remember she was to take, um, you buy wine, she had wine, and she would get a, a stone, a gem, whatever it be, crystal, or she'll make me get a hammer, <laughs> try to break it up, and then you put it into the the wine, and she would give and give it to people to drink. And I says, "Mom, why are you smashing up the uh, this object? Why don't I show you how to take the energy up? Because that's what she wants. It's the energy of the gym. This is way before I ever heard of uh, Bach flower remedies or any of this stuff, right? Because right. I didn't hear that stuff. So I said, "It's all energy, right?" I says, "Why are you doing it?" Well, my mom says, "Well, I want the, the ruby or whatever it is." him to drink it and this is how they're going to do it <laughs> i said okay well why do you want him to drink it well that would change this that would change that or protect him or do you know all this stuff. some of the times she would make me crush and wear as a pouch or any other kind of uh things that you would do right bury in the backyard so i this was way before i ever heard of about flower remedies which by the way I, so i would do that for people and i would say look okay tell you what here i would say it's like because i was to the store basically, I said, Give me a pound of this and a pound of that. But I was talking to be a pound of different stones and stuff. I, I still have, I could show you boxes of stuff I have, okay? <laughs> That's part of the, what I do. Uh, I do gem elixirs. I, I used to do Bach flower remedies because I, I, when you started doing this, I say, I would, uh, I would tell the person, Okay, look, here, take this stone and either wear it or bury it or something. And you, no problem. The curse is gone, right? <laughs> Yeah. Right? I would give him that. Says okay. So sometimes they would bring me a kid who had um, you know seizures, right? And of course they believed there was an evil spirit coming in, and I wasn't going to tell him. Well, maybe it might have something to do with what you're eating or what you've been exposed to. So you have to go by belief. And remember what we saw about getting attention. So yeah, yeah. It's real easy if you if you have uh, in, like in the Santera, they they look for that person who's giving attention, and they go to him. They look. You're giving attention. I want help, right? So my mother said, come, and everybody would come. And I would do all this stuff for years and years and years. And that would be the start of my journey. Because she told me, she said, look, you have a magical name that's yours. And you have this name, which I gave Andrew. That's your name, right? That's your name, the city, your brother. would know you. But you have this magical name you've always had. And you always will have. And I said, I know. And I told her what my name was. And she says, yeah, that's right. See? And so she, she was a very powerful lady. We used to leave our bodies together and do stuff you would not believe. She died not too long ago. I still have her ashes. That's how powerful it is. Because of my dad's ashes, everybody ashes went. But my mom's ashes are staying with me. Which is like a powerful, magical being. And those ashes are I, my connection with her, whatever dimension she's in. Mm -hmm. I communicate with her quite regularly. And I say, hi, what's happening, right? You know, we used to leave our bodies, sit on clouds. Anyway, that's the start of my journey because I, I came here uh, conscious. When you were born, when you come into this uh, system, you have this shock. And a lot of times you go, what happened? And you're like, years before you ever figure it out, right? Because <laughs> I, I, I work with a lot of people now who are basically in shock. I have this one kid, he's like 24, most amazing being you will ever meet. He has a master. His master is going, holy cow, right? Yeah, because some of them come in and now they're powerful when they right, come you're in You can be my student. You can be my student, but in reality, you're my master, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? Like we're you learning I mean? from them. He is so powerful. This kid is so powerful. Yeah. 
He said, what's going on? I says, you're in shock right now. You're an unlimited being inside this limited body. You just don't know how to quite handle it. You're frying everybody around. You're frying yourself. You're frying everybody. Everything you're frying. I said, how come I'm not frying you? He said, well, I'm fireproof. You can't fry me. Because <laughs> you're conscious already. So you came in aware. You came in conscious. Uh, and uh, I've gone through uh, uh, lots of different journeys. I was in Vietnam. was declared dead twice. Wow. Twice. Twice. First time we wrote this thing, you know, that you're dead, the, the little signature, you know, because uh, I was uh, uh, 1968. I was blown up. <laughs> wow. <laughs> right? And I had um, I can cut, uh, I can cut, you know, Concussion. the. Uh, yeah, the, the force came and smashed me this way, but I hit, was it this way, and I hit my face. See, I had, I could take these teeth, right now I'm still going through it because they, uh, they, all my teeth were smashed uh, eight months ago. I was bleeding in my ear with my doctor. He says, well, you have to go to ear, nose, eye, nose, ear, and throat specialist, right? You put a camera in there. He said, what did you do to your ear? He, said, he pulled out a piece of shrapnel from my brain. He says, it's coming out of your brain. He went like this and threw it away. I said, where, where, where? He pulled shrapnel out of your brain that <laughs> got there in 1968? And, and, he's, and, I, and it's and he said, 2018. He said, what, he said, what, you, what, what happened to 2008? Yeah, right. Because <laughs> I couldn't see, I used to be, uh, as a, a Navy, I was a photographer. And uh, I was always this crazy because I dealt with, I mean, let me tell you something, in Vietnam, okay, so I was seeing dead beings who were shot out. You were out seeing of their, the dead people walking around. They were shot out of their body going, WTF, WTF, right? And then it was, you see me, I see you, relax. And they were but like, you were communicating oh. with them. You were like, hey, yeah, I see you're dead. And you're walking around. And because I was <laughs> doing that before. See, as a kid, I used to, my mom's, uh, I remember very clearly because my mom would take me, we would go walking, right? And I would look at that guy. I said, mom, that guy's going to die. I said, yes, dear, leave him alone. But my mom, mom he's going to die. I used to go up to the guy and say, so, you know, you're going to die. She said, don't do it. It's like, what are you doing? Sorry. It took me a long time. Even when you watch people's auras, because uh, that aura thing is really <laughs> intense because what does my aura as, look like as a kid as a kid you just go <laughs> wow right <laughs> hey look at that <laughs> <laughs> look at what is, i want to know what my aura looks like is it what color is it right now the well green? the uh, the equipment does things to people's auras oh, okay. and uh, there's a really cool way you can enhance it you know they can make it so that i know there's they take a picture of it at the at the uh, yeah. show and right. i i had it years ago but i think it changes i think your aura color changes over time as, like it, it as you grow second, and evolve and you change second, second exactly right yeah it changes yeah, second to second second and to so, second yeah second to second it's, like, it's a living thing it's like a, a living who is doing this thing and it's like you have oh, this thing wow <laughs> I used to see, have you haven't seen any of my artwork because, you know, I, I, ha one, I love your artwork. Yeah. One of the things that I, that, that as a we'll kid, put a link I can, in the show to some see, of I can see, artwork. I can see sound and you can I, can see see, sound. I can see colors and, and I can see sound and I can hear colors. You can hear colors and see sound. You know, I, I'm going to stop you right there and say, because some people are going to be like, what? <laughs> but I, I want to stop you because I want to confirm some of this. So in my training with the four winds, uh, life body, there's one part where um, we use our stones. We have our Mesa stones. And we, we instead of, we, we use them to get information. And so we'll take one of the stones out and we'll be asking it questions about somebody like our partner. And, and, and working with the issue. And then instead of like uh, using it in the traditional way of placing it over their chakra and doing a clearing or something, we would like lick it and see, okay, what does it taste like? What's the message from the licking? Okay. And then we would, uh, we would smell it and see, okay, what does it smell like? Okay. I'm smelling this or that. Okay. And then we would listen to it. Oh, I'm hearing this. And then we would go back to the person who would say, well, this is what I tasted. This is what I smelled. This is what I heard. And is that any of that apply? And they'd be like, oh my God, that is so profound. And it'd be this big moment of realization that all the senses were coming into play with the stone. So I would just want to, I so, would, you know, so what that. I see from that is that, see, you're, you have, I don't know where you got that <laughs> technique, but it's a technique that trains you to see better. Yeah. Because you, you see in lots of different ways. See, I didn't have the training. So it all comes in and it all sort of, gets together and I just, you know, you just see, you, you know, and I, you have to learn to control. So you learn, you train to, that's why your, your tongue 
to smell to and also too you can literally close your eyes and you'll see the energy that the stone's telling you because it talks to you things talk to you in different ways Always. yes my stones have talked to me quite a bit and i but, fearlessly so, say that on this show <laughs> exactly right so they also have their own frequency so in essence they're singing to you all the time and those stones change because they also respond to you you respond to them and then if you get a bunch of stones together like i always have things see look see i always have things but, oh beautiful what, you know, what kind I, of stone I, is that what is that it's a called crystal? celestite celestite oh yes right and then this is yeah. another one see oh beautiful <laughs> look what's at interesting that. is that i i can't show you because basically over here in this section over there and maybe I could, wait a second, I know how to do this, watch, see, look. You see them over there, see that one? See how they glow yeah, and stuff? Yeah, lots of. So what, I, what I'm doing, and just to show you how, how weird I am, is what I've been, uh, is this okay? Yeah. So what, I, what I've been doing lately is I've been telling people, look, you can be on my, on my list, because I, what I do is I send light to everybody. And the light rotates, I rotate the light. And, uh, and I've been teaching people how to circle yourself with this light. And so naturally it seems to be expanding to circle the earth. So what I've been doing is, okay, I'm circling the earth with this light. And you're welcome to be in on it, right? And so what I've done is I trained my stones to form a, a, a field that transmits it to the earth and anybody in on it, and everybody gets the light. And it's a kind of a group consciousness thing that all of us like, is that like your light warriors, right? <laughs> light yeah. warriors. Rainbow that's, light warriors, yeah. That's perfect, see, for that. So it, even though, you know, we're all doing this in different aspects of it. It's like an elephant, right? It has an ear. Yeah. Do you remember the blind man and the elephant? Have you ever I heard of that? I, it's vaguely familiar. Okay, so you have five blind men and they walk up to an elephant. One guy says, an elephant is like, a uh, big ear you know, you know or no 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 it's like a, a trunk it's a trunk it's like a funny the guy said no you're a bullfrog he looks at the tail it's a wiggly little thing and oh you're all wrong and he looks at the but this yet they're right but they're right they're wrong they're all right. seeing a piece of it yeah exactly right so when i see what you're doing and what i'm doing what other people are doing they're all doing a piece of it and they all yeah, they're all, all describing that elephant and they're all working. And right now we're going through a heavy major crisis thing uh, because you know, we're going through the Piscean age into the Aquarian age. We're overlapping right there in the middle, right there and everything. And this is a, the Chinese, may you be, uh, life be full of excitement because that means we're going through this heavy change right now. I mean, I can talk to you for days about what's going on because as a scientist, you can physically see what's going on. You know, because what happens is our universe, our galaxy is traveling through space. And every time it goes through different parts of different parts of space, those are the, what we call current age, uh, uh, Piscean age, right? Because it's a different frequency. So we're going from one frequency into another frequency. So you have these fishes that are used to be in the water. Well, they're going to have to be fishes in the air. And they don't like that. So we're going to go through, we're going through this, right? That's right now. You look around, it's so intense. Fire, fire, burn, burn, stuff, right? Okay, yeah, I'll, and aren't we creating quiet. some of that? Like we're creating our consciousness is actually influencing the earth to create some of that, isn't it? Or are we yes, just participating? Because it feels like if human consciousness is sort of like having a lot of um, resistance to evolution and getting angry and like the ego likes to do when it doesn't like what's happening, it gets very angry and frustrated and starts to act out and and all of that sort of thought and energy then influences the water on the planet and influences the, you We're know. We're 99% water. Yeah, and then that starts to influence how the earth is behaving uh, around us. And so, like, what part of this is, is our responsibility? So look, so look, just like I can <laughs> say, I can tell you, I'm sending light to cover the earth, so I'm sending you light. So the opposite is true. There are evil things that can say, I'm going to suck the way the light. I'm going to constantly be costing this. I'm going to do this. And so therefore, what you think, whether it be good or whether it be evil, will be used. <laughs> so if you think good, the good guys will have the tools used. But if you think bad, the bad guys will start using that energy and that use because it's all real. You can't, matter and energy cannot be created nor destroyed. As a scientist, you go, well, that makes total sense, doesn't it? 
That's why I was talking with you about destruction, because there's no such thing as creation or destroy. It's all the same, just different equations, right? Different looks of this thing, but it's still the same. You have to be able to see the whole thing, right? Right, the whole picture, rather like the maybe not just the forest. I saw this really cool thing the other day. Uh, there was a uh, there was a um, a deer in the middle of a there's a forest in the background and a road and a deer. Now the question is, one question is, what is that deer doing in the middle of the road, right? The headlights are going like this, right? The other question is, what is that road doing in the middle of the forest? Yeah, that's the other question, isn't it? Right. Yeah, I saw that same thing. <laughs> yeah, did you? And that's so one. That, that's exactly what's going on right now. Okay. Because so we're because you're talking about good and evil, but that's like really polarity. Yeah. But they but we're so we're integrating back into oneness. We but created, it's all part of the same cycle because, yeah. like, I loved when I did my broadcast about what you were talking about the destruction, and reinvention is that somebody made the comment, it's a snake eating a tail. And I was like, yeah, that's exactly right. Because we can be in love. We can, we can deconstruct what we constructed out of love too. It doesn't have to be. I think the reason why people have a, have a bad feeling around the word destruction is because up until this point, we've associated, we've, we've, we've tagged that word with emotions that are not maybe pleasant like hate or anger or like I want to destroy that because I hate it right but we can also deconstruct with love we can say wow I learned so much from that experience and I'm so grateful that I learned from that conditioning for example that's causing suffering in my life and now I can say wow I'm really grateful that I can change that conditioning that I can release it and I can just deconstruct it to give myself more love by coming up with another way of being <laughs> see that so we can do it from love and it, then it changes the meaning because i was trying to bring in art you know if you looked at the picture of it i was trying to bring in the mosaic which is a perfect example of destruction and then creation because you can take something that was whole smash it up into littler bits and then take the bits and reconfigure them into a mosaic and that's gorgeous I look at it and I've learned to look at things in lots and lots of different ways because that way I'm trying to be open to what they will see, you know, because my little goal is to see like what you see so that I can better see. That's basically. Because I'm looking at the tail and you're looking at the trunk and somebody else is looking at, you know. And what's point. interesting about the, the snake eating itself is that the difference is that the body of the snake is constantly changing. So you, you don't know you're eating yourself because you see something else. So you look at the snake, if the snake stayed the same, you go, oh my God, you might tell I'm not going to do it. But if it's like it keeps changing, because that, that's just a trick. Everything's constantly changing. So you, you don't know you're basically destroying your own tail because your tail is constantly changing all the time. You say, oh, this is better. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? It keeps you right on going. And, that, and that's where you get the, 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 the uh, kundalini kind of energy symbol kind of thing, right? You know? And that's what I use a figure eight symbol is my symbol for Astro's Garden. That's the name of the church that I started. And that's my real name. One of my real names is Astra. Uh, and that's why I was going to send you a link. There's a link on this place by Games for People's Yellow Pages. I started the church and then I started a New Age Traveler's Guide to Florida, which basically was teaching people, right, how to meditate, how to learn the Tai Chi, all these things and promoting them. And, and it's it's uh, Gainesville happens to be a very high energy spot <laughs> too, you know, just like, really? just like Austin is. Okay. Cause one of the things that, that uh, I've learned is I can sit outside and I, you can see the energy that's going up through the earth. It's going out. You go, Whoa, look at that. Cause I lived in Sedona, right? Yeah. I Sedona. I we definitely know. By accident, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, you know what I mean? It's like you're doing acid at night. You see all this stuff. You go, what the heck? I might as well check it out. Right. I ended up in a place called Ruby Focus in Sedona. Because you imagine at night, you're driving, you see this swirling ruby color going like that, swirling, like, so, you know, like that, literally. It's up and in I, I haven't seen them, but I can feel the vortexes. Like when you, oh. it's palpable. When you go to Sedona or someplace like that, like they walk right through you. Yeah, so there's <laughs> one place was on the top of this mountain, and I decided to go watch it sit across the street or across the mountain and watch it. The guy came out, tall guy, white hair, very alien looking, really tall. And I'm tall, I'm 6'4", and I'm looking up, and I'm going, hi, hello. 
He goes, what, what are you doing here? Uh, I noticed you. I says, well, I'm looking at you pretty. <laughs> That's not my voice. I was, I, I, and he brought me inside. And he has a giant raw opal, a red ruby. It was like this. Okay, you, you know what I'm saying? It's like that, raw. I, I swear, his wife, this is called Aliens. And I was pointing out because uh, there is, uh, there, there's three places, Gainesville, Austin, and guess where the other one is? Sedona? Well, that's, uh, uh, there's Gainesville, uh, Austin, Sedona, and there's a, 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 a fourth, uh, that would be the Sedona, right? But I was also, I should have said four because the place I'm living now in Malibu, uh, this is another place of the massive amounts of vortex and really, really weird energy here. There's more psychic people living here than any place on the planet, and more powerful people, and they don't tell you a thing, right? <laughs> they don't say nothing. They don't know? say. Well, you know, here's the thing. I wanted to get back to your seeing these aliens in a, in a desert. Um, a friend of mine actually took a photo of something that looked exactly like what you were talking about. A camera, their iPhone, took a picture of it because she could see it with her naked eye and took a picture to see if she could see it on the camera, and she could. And then she shared it on Facebook with a couple people, like a private you know, sharing. And I happened to be one of the ones that got to see it. And I was like, that is really trippy because you can actually see this being right there. It's a blur. It's kind of like a, you can see it clearly. And, but it, it's like, you can tell that it's not in this entirely in this dimension. It's kind of in between. You want to hear something really trippy? That is so interesting. I, I want to tell yeah. you a secret. Come here. Come here. Don't, don't tell anybody. Okay. Okay. Shh. okay. So, uh, the, you know, the Pope, right? Yes. Okay. They have an observatory. They spent $40 million on an observatory. Okay. They have their own observatory on top of this mountain, giant observatory. The Pope says, we are in contact and they're coming. And he says, it's God's everywhere. So they're part of our, God's children were, and we're waiting for them. And that's why they built it. And that's what they said. And they said further, he says, uh, not only are we in contact, but they're, they're, he talked about this um, satellite. So there's a satellite called the Black Knight. See, I was in the Navy in 1968, if you remember, I told you about that, right? So in 69, we did the, they did the Apollo shots. 68, 69, and 70, they did the Apollo shots. And, uh, but anyway, uh, what was I talking about? <laughs> I, got, I sort of blew it away. It just went away because the aliens. I don't remember. The now. aliens are coming. You said the aliens. Right. The Pope, the Pope said, said the, the aliens, said the aliens are on the way. Here's the thing, too. It's interesting, too, is that uh, in 68, 69, I, I, I was uh, the photographer for the Apollo shots. And I also sent pictures to life and stuff like that. So uh, remember the first step for man, all that? All that? Yeah. Is, so the reason why we went there was because. They, they thought that the Russians were there already and the Russians thought the Americans were there already because they found these buildings on, on the moon. The, yeah, the, I've heard the, about this. They found the dust storm the went away and there were these buildings. Oh my God, we better get over there. And so it was on the Sea of Tranquility and they were going there to check it out. But the problem was is that you can't get any equipment anywhere near it for long because the equipment would go. <laughs> and the Russians lost ship after ship. They finally gave up. Gave up. We had to turn around, run away, the, you know, our tails between our legs and go back. And why do you think we never went back again? Right now we're in, uh, 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 landed on Mars because the Martians think it's the other place we wanted to go because that's where they they saying that's the source of where this is happening. And you wait to see what happens with the Martians thing because that's going to be another interesting because what's, what will happen is that there's going to have to they, see what we're doing right now to the earth. We're not the only one that know that. So either they're going to have to say the good guys, but they're good guys and bad guys. The good guys are either going to say, well, we either have to do something or we could just sit back and watch and see what happens. We know what's going to happen, right? Well, it's because like, if this planet goes out of whack for some reason, then it affects the whole solar system. And then it affects yeah. the, other, the other solar yeah. systems adjacent to us, which is why if you look at it, I mean, I know some people listening to this are like, what is going on? With this <laughs> I know. I came Hollywood. here at the wrong time. <laughs> but, you know, but here's the thing. I, I want to just remind everybody that um, your ego is going to be resistant to anything like this because it's, it's, uh, it's kind of scary to think about that there, you know, are uh, aliens and things like that. It's scary to people. And 
so your ego is going to be like, wow, I can't even listen to any of this stuff. <laughs> but, but here's, here's, here's why I want you to just open your mind a little tiny bit is because, um, just notice how many more people have started channeling ascended masters and wisdom from out there. Like just notice how much that's happening now. Like and it has just picked up since 2012. So many more people now channeling and knowing the same thing as each other. That's not a mistake. And that's why you've got to kind of like sort of open up a little bit to some of this to just receive it. And can so, I, yeah. Can I tell you something ahead. about channeling? Yeah. Okay. So, um, <laughs> do you know who Elizabeth Clare Prophet is? Mm -mm. She runs the Ascended Masters University. It's called Ascended Masters University. It's over by the uh, Mount Shasta. And I ran into another big, powerful place, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I ran into her in uh, Austin in the uh, early 70s. And she was doing the Mary Bethany School of Consciousness. And uh, that was oh, that was the time I met uh, Bob Arandas. I, I, I stayed with him and his, and his old group of people. I think it was 1970. And he introduced me to all these people throughout this thing. And, uh, but... Um, <clears throat> Again, I lost my train of thought because this is we're, we're, you know so, so far anyway so far out there that because uh, I, I went to uh, uh, he took me to New York City and I, I met a whole bunch of channeling people there. Um, Joya Santana is another one. She was be channeling Ascended Master. Elizabeth Clare was there channeling Ascended Masters. And of course, I couldn't help it, but I started channeling because I was already channeling it. And they said, we know you can channel. You might as well just let it go <laughs> and see what happens. Right, exactly. And, and to this day, I do, uh, I do have one of, I have a radio show, <laughs> which I, I call it WTF, okay? It's, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I have five radio shows. And this one's done by, uh, I channel a bunch of different aliens. <laughs> and these are guys who used to come to Earth to go, because Earth is a unique place in this soul, in this universe right here, okay? It's like I said, every universe has one unique place, okay? So the Earth is like so different than everything else. We got air, we got water, we got oxygen. We have this thing which is very different than everywhere else in this part of the, of the thing. And so guys used to come here from other systems and do from fishing. And you imagine aliens fishing. He said, what? What the heck, <laughs> right? You can't do that in other uh, in their systems. And so I, I channel, so I, I would be channeling, um, I have channeled a variety of different masters and different beings throughout my cycle. And you're right. Um, they're basically uh, the new people, new child, children that are born are natural channels. They're yeah, already, they already have open. a connection. Their crown chakras are open. Right, they already have a connection yeah, they already with a know number it. of different people already. You know? <laughs> and they're not right? crazy. Okay, no, so they, they're like, there's multidimensional realities happening and there's, and it's all based on frequency. So if you're not seeing fairies, for example, it's because you're not operating at the frequency with which yeah. you could perceive fairies yeah. because you're operating at a lower, denser frequency that you're not able to perceive that. It doesn't mean it's not there. It means that your frequency is not at the place that you can actually perceive it. Now, I am not at the place that I can perceive it yet I get I don't know I, I can't see it I get giggles and I get like little shimmers but I don't like <laughs> and sometimes I can see sparkles sometimes I see sparkles I don't like just see a fairy you know but but there are people who do and and it's because they've managed to get themselves to a place where they're able to be in that frequency long enough to perceive it so that yeah. is something like rather than they say it because I know some people's egos are really triggered right now Rather than they say that kind of thing, why not open to the possibility that anything is possible and like start letting your mind have the question, how would I be able to get to a space where I could perceive something like that, which would be pretty magical and wonderful? How would I get to that kind of space that I could perceive something like that? Because wouldn't that be kind of interesting, right? The interesting thing is <laughs> that in order to have the right frequencies, all your energy centers have to be working. We have yeah. a system of energy in our bodies. It's just uh, that if it isn't working, right, it's not going. The energy is not going to flow through, and you're not going to be going ding, right? That's why when I do my music, I learned a long time ago when I was watching uh, when I uh, 
when I, I started doing, uh, I worked with a doctor, and the doctor would do acupuncture. And he would do a needle, and he says, okay, what do you see now? I said, well, some blue went up this leg, went over here, went across it, went ding. I said, yeah, that's this meridian. I said, well, okay, what do you do, see now? So I would see that, right? And then I you told would see the meridians, yeah, yeah, when he was working on them. When he did okay. that, when he did this thing. And then, then I said, well, why don't you attach a, a sound to that the same time you did this thing, right? I said, what do you mean attach the sound? I says, well, You hear that? Yeah. It'll, it'll keep on going too for a long time. That is a, it's a certain frequency that your body takes it. You think you hear with your ear, you don't. You really hear different parts of your organ, your skin. Everything hears it in different ways. Right? See? So your eyes, when you see the eyes, you have these rods and cones right in the back of your eyes. But they're no touch. They ju energy jumps across. So there's, there's all kinds of frequencies that makes these things go Ding! And so when it's not working, it's usually because what you eat, toxins in your food, cover these things and they don't work, right? It's not, right? So what you eat and the energy you give, to, so that's a lot to do with, so what I do when I do a sound of, of, of music, I, I, I incorporate a certain frequency, I hide it. So you're going, la, 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 but your body's going, whoa, your heart, and so I, I, there's a tone for each chakra. There's 108 different chakras in your body, 108. They all do this thing. And when you get a block, it just stops at a certain place. It doesn't go up any further. Because what happens, you go like this, and then you, right? You have your, and then it just overflows. And you're, that's when your frequency level just goes through the roof. And people will pick on that. So the problem with a lot of these people who have, uh, are in shock is that in their past lives, they used to be amazing energy lights, right? But the light will also attract all kinds of stuff to you, right? <laughs> and you have to be willing to, to either figure out how to defend yourself or just get run over by them, right? They'll be so powerful, zap, you go, what happened? Yeah, so it's it's important to be balanced. And I, I agree with the frequency work. I, I do frequency work myself. I, You know, if I'm feeling sort of funky, then I'll pull on one of those uh, Sulfregio frequencies. And I will just lie down and, and go through a range of them, you know, just to balance back up again my energy field. And then right. I feel calm again. And, you know, then I can even get to a place, if you, if you do the ones that work on the upper chakras, then you can even get to a place where you access your higher consciousness and bring that in. And then, you know, you kind of blip out for a second and come back in, <laughs> you know, and the blipping out is really relaxing. So what I learned is that uh, you have the left brain and the right brain, right? Yeah, and I'm not sure that's true anymore because the neuroscience is showing that's not so true. Well, what happens is, is that when you have a blockage, you end up having two. That's why you have two. You have a blockage. It separates oh. it. So it's not so, really two, but, if you, but you only have yeah. two if you've got this blockage. That's Exactly why. right. So if you remove the blockage, they both will go back to working as one. That's nice. And then and so the it's like the left hand not talking to the right hand because it's not communicating to the things it's supposed to. You know, I mean, so the right side of your brain really, and the, uh, the right side of your brain really communicates to the left side of your body and, your, you know, and so on the other way. And if they're not, there's, too the many, there's too many interruptions. It's sort of like uh, rubber shoes keep us from connecting with the earth. Right. So there's tons of blockages. There's tons of these things that we are exposed to all the time from electromagnetic fields, radiation fields, all kinds of uh, these radiation fields which are causing blockage, uh, as well as the food which enter toxins in our body which causes blockage. And then if, if, you, if you knew how to deal with that, you just have to basically radiate so much that the energy has to fight to get at you. You see what I mean? It's like you force, force it the other way around. I learned that holograms are a very, very powerful tool, a hologram. You can create a hologram around you and it makes everything sort of go around you instead of having to fight it. Yeah, it just sort of deflects it. Right. And like, sure uh, it's, it's like visible. a keto. Right, right. That's why I learned Tai Chi, because it's, it's, you, you just make it go through you, you know? And so I, look, I, I have a kind of like a Tai Chi hologram. <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, you know, here's, here's a really interesting thing, is that as you ascend your energy, and as you can open up your consciousness to be less doubtful, <laughs> then, you know, because doubt is another version of fear. You know, doubt is fear, basically. And, you know, this kind of stuff, when you, when you hear some of this stuff we're talking about, 
and you get an inner giggle, that's a sign that there's some truth going on. Inner giggle. The inner giggle is a sign that there's truth. And then the doubt comes in like, oh, that can't be. And the doubt is fear actually talking in your ear. So if you can kind of bring yourself to the inner giggle and stay in the inner giggle, like, well, I wonder, that's okay. I'm okay with that being possible. Then you can really can progress forward in your, in your journey. Wouldn't you think so, Andy? What you're talking about is being a child. That's yeah, being a child, opinion. which is why you told me months ago, we actually had a conversation, gosh, it must have been like a year ago, we had a conversation, and I was being very serious. I was being super serious, and I was having a lot of challenges in my 2018. And uh, we had a conversation, and you were like, you know, I think what would really help you is if you put a fairy garden up. <laughs> your, and I was like, listen oh. to it. I was like, you are so full of it. What are you talking about? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Tell me what you were telling me about the fairy garden. So uh, I learned a long time ago, if you open yourself up, you can't expect, you know, you should have to be open to whatever comes your way. So that means you can't doubt anything. So if you start talking to a little tiny being who says, hi, how are you? I go, well, I'm fine. How are you? And, and, and other kids, because a lot of times other people see him too, kids who go, so you're talking to him too? He says, yeah, we're, we're, why not? <laughs> and so I don't have that doubt anymore. And, and, and teaches me a lot because they teach me a lot. They say, look, my tree is not happy. And then I end up talking to the tree. I relate to the being, an elemental being in the tree. Uh, I started a long time ago relating to another tree or any being, usually the trees because they're so big, you know, as a living being who communicates with me. And I communicate back and I know when they're happy, when they're sick, what's going on, when they're afraid. And then that always leads me to, I call them uh, fairy gateways because one of the things I find out about the energy is that uh, there's uh, meridians in the earth, okay? Because I used to give a talk a long time ago to uh, scientists, <laughs> and I talk about energy. <clears throat> and, and, uh, and a lot of times we talk about, you know, the, uh, the lines of energy in your body, where there are lines of energy throughout the earth. And uh, there are certain magical spots, especially like you understand over in Europe and England, uh, uh, Stonehenge, they build these places right where there was, they all met. Yeah, Machu Picchu's on one of those, too. Exactly right. They're very, yeah. very intense spots because the energy just goes, and they go, this is a good spot, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know what I mean? And, yeah. and, and, and uh, that happens in your bo- with your body, too. You have, you have energy uh, centers all throughout your body, and, and I learned that the, the sound affects that, the sound and the color. That's why uh, when I did, uh, I do, uh, I do gem elixirs, so... What I learned is that certain gems are really, really super powerful because their frequency are all of this world. I use uh, Moldavite. Moldavite is a oh, meteorite yeah. that crashed through us a long time ago. And this stuff is like, one of the cool things about it is you start having dreams in your color, colorful dreams. And so what I do is I also have a, uh, I call it Dream You. I give people classes in their dreams. Because if you work in your dreams, it manifests in the real in reality. So I, I work on your body, for example. You're not feeling well, fine. Let's talk about it. And I meet you in their dreams. And we go, well. And then the thing is, you're not limited to your body. You can be in whatever form you want to be. And a lot of times, people want to be in their natural form, natural. See, I said, that's why you're sick. Because you're not really that kind of body person, are you? And look at your body. You know. So uh, I've learned to deal with uh, uh, sound and color in such a different way. And so the fairy, the fairy mills is really interesting because when you build a fairy house, lots of things are happening. Your consciousness is now changed. Your consciousness is now going ding and start <laughs> vibrating. You're vibrating uh, and uh, other things will vib- that you vibrate together. This is how Flash, you know, in cartoon Flash vibrates so fast he can't be seen. Well, Superman goes up to him and says, hi, because he's vibrating just as fast as you are. So I have other things. And that's the thing. Yeah, we live in a multi-dimensional universe. All of that is is different vibrations. It's just different vibrations layered on top of one another. And when you exactly can, right, so exactly. it's all happening at once. And that's why, like, that explains like some of these weird occurrences that happen where you know somebody's like in their basement and then a Roman sh- soldier like comes through on a horse. You know, and they're like, "How did that happen?" Well, it's like some little glitch in the matrix happened, and now these two times happened at once for just a moment of perception, and then it went away. And so, you know, you can have these, uh, so what you're saying is that me creating my fairy garden was an intention to invite in that frequency of fairies with my conscious recognition that they exist and that I'm welcoming 
perceiving them. And then I even create a little house, you know, a little home you know, for them to be with me, right? And what's happening is just you are now open channels with Mother Earth. You have now opened a channel to communicate with these higher beings. Because there is a higher being that most people don't realize. Because one of the things I realized right away, see, I used to do, and I still do psilocybin mushrooms all the time. But the reason why I do it is because I'm communicating. See, when you do mushrooms, you're tripping. You're in the mind of this being. And this being, I call it, it's mycelium. Mycelium is a kind of uh, fungi that grows in the ground, but it's really a being. It's one giant being in the whole planet. Okay, so mycelium, it's a living thing. It's a, it's yeah. a living thing that has many um, instantiations. Instantiations, that's a good way to do it. It's, a, it's yeah. the world's first gardener and the last gardener. When you die, everything goes back to her. So she wants you to be as healthy so she can eat you later on, right? See, and all the trees, when they're born that way, they actually look for their roots, look for that because it's a communication web. They can communicate with each other. All we evolved from mycelium. It took us millions of years. We're gonna say, okay, we're gonna get up off the earth and we'll walk around. So our skin is identical to the skin of the earth. I mean, we're basically little earth walking around. See, right? Yeah, because we're made of earth. We're made of earth and water and fire and, and so air. The, and so you, sometimes <laughs> us physical beings need devices, need tools to help us to, to expand our consciousness, our awareness. Because you don't really need a fairy house to communicate with, mother, with her. But that fairy house is a magical tool that you can turn on, that turns you on, that vibrates, makes you... Because you have to slow down or speed up or whatever to be able to deal with that. Otherwise, you forget about it, right? You won't even know it's there. People build it and they forget about it. You know, they're not communicating with it, are they? Right? You have to consciously you consciously communicate, communicate with, it. with it. Yeah, and right. I do. I sit out there and I meditate with it. Yeah. Right, right, and then you, then you start getting energy information starts coming back to you lots of different ways. That's what happens uh, for me. I get it in a uh, uh, past few years ago. I started writing musics. So it was really a form of channeling. I don't do it, but I know exactly who, which one of my, one of my because I have a, what you might call multiple personality, and I can even tell you who they are, <laughs> you know, uh, which is kind of interesting because they're male, female, so one lady does the music, another person does the artwork, and that's a form of communication that they're getting, that they're telling me, and there's lots of stuff I get, but I, and I know we're in this massive change time right now, because we're not careful, we're not going to be around in this form where everything will change to the point where Mother Earth will say, okay, next. Yeah, and right? so so we're in a place now where, um, you know, opening up to understand a little bit more about this existence we're having on the Earth and how we can interact with it in a more conscious way and realizing that that there's multiple layers of vibration happening concurrently on the Earth and uh, and they're all being impacted by how we're treating the earth at this level. <laughs> like the, it's all, it's all one organism. So it's in everybody's well, best interest for us to get a little bit more conscious. One of the things that's interesting <laughs> about the earth is that people need to realize is that uh, if you evolve to a higher being, you don't really live on this planet. You're, you're on a different uh, system in a different place. That's where the higher beings lived. This is a place where you learn to deal with a physical body kind of thing. See, this is where you learn to, to have to deal with, well, sex, have to deal with food, have to deal with, right, going to the Survival. bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> right. And you don't get that in other places, you know. Basically, you're already an evolved being. You're going, okay, right? I mean, I remember one, for me, I was a, a son. And after a couple of billion years, you go, this is kind of boring. What can we do now, right? Yeah, you just want to try it. That's why I like the diversity. That's why That's I told right. you I like all the things. When That's we open right. sacred space, I, I always invite in like all these, everything, tobacco and the mountains and, you know, my lineages and the ascended masters. And by the time I got done with it, Angie's like, did you get everybody? <laughs> did you get everybody? <laughs> and you have to leave a, a blank, fill in the blank. <laughs> But fill in the blank because that will happen. So, but something will come along and you go, what the heck was that? Right? What is that? And anything I forgot that might be really awesome to include in this conversation. <laughs> and, and that pretty much happens to me every once in a while because I go through a, a next step up. I, I'm doing my thing. I said, I can't possibly get any higher. Next thing you go, wham! You go, what happened? Well, okay, you just higher. said you couldn't yeah. get any higher. Right. Right. And that happens to me occasionally. Like, I'm in, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be 70, okay, in a couple of weeks, a week or two. And, that, and to me, that's a, a whole nother level that I'm, well, I personally will, the things I would like to do that I really can't do, I'm working on, because my thing is to go sit under a mango tree and do readings for people. 
and cause things to happen to them. Because that's what I do now with a lot of people. I play games and I cause things to happen to them. Positive you know, things. You know, things, things that, for example, I was, uh, so I play, uh, I run the planet and my name is Captain Crazy. That's the name of my, that's my name, okay? <laughs> Captain Crazy. And so I have about 32 different friends and I'm the oldest and they're usually about 12, 13, 14. One of the other, one guy is like 21. And so we're playing the game and I said, you know, there are ways you and I, like we're doing now, we can communicate while we're playing this game. Okay, so this gets on, it's just, hi there. I go, how old are you? Um, 13. And then next thing you know, it's like, who is this? Uh, Captain Crazy, how old are you? I'm 70. You're a 70 year old person talking to my 13 year old daughter? Well, and I was like, no, 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 she came to my planet, I, and we're just playing this game. And, and she said, fine, okay. And then, uh, and then uh, about two weeks later, a month later, she said, she comes back on, I like what you're doing. She's, thank you, thank you, thank you. Because she, we, we talk, instead of playing, because that's why, that's why I talk, she says, my mom doesn't love me. I don't know what's going on. She's always picking on me. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I feel so useless. I'm, and I says, no. Why do you want Because she's 13, right? And she built a massive spaceship that a scientist would love. I'm looking at her and going, and you built that. Because she, she didn't know about thrust. <laughs> if you're a big ship, you have to have enough thrust to get off the planet. She says, why can't I get off the planet? She says, well, you need enough thrust. What's that? Well, force and everything. You have to have enough force to get off. Oh, she went. And she was like, amazing. And she's 13. And now she's like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be an engineer. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And the mother's saying, yeah, go for it. And, I, and that happens a lot with all the different kids. I have another person who's like 17. And he says, I don't know what I'm going to do in my life. I said, what do you do now? I fly. I play a game. I fly this drone. I said, well, make, fly a drone in real life. You can make a lot of money working for the government. Or Guess what he does now? He works for, for a, a, a agricultural institute, you know, agricultural place, like a big farm. He flies drones all over the place to, to view. And he's making a lot. And he's 18. Happens. Wow. Things so things this is fascinating yeah. to me because, my, you know, my 13-year-old, my, uh, well, no, what is it, 13, 16, 16 now. I lost a couple years. My 16-year-old loves to play those games. Like, he yeah. loves, all he wants to do is play those games, like group games, and he, now he makes playing. Make that into a valuable tool that they have. You know, he, he, wants to, he wants to go to college now, and he wants to be a, um, you know, an aeronautical engineer. Yeah, and he, and he can put all this like skill so to use. Fancy put, and technical. You'll put it all to, to use. He, the second hand for them now to even deal with computers and to do all this stuff. A lot of new stuff is going to come out from all these kids, and that's because of the game. See, when you play a game, you have to use both parts of your brain. One part of your brain is going, doc, doc, do this, shoot that. Another part of your brain is dealing with all these other things. So the two of them together, uh, one of the things I do is I'm a VR developer. You know what VR is? Virtual, uh, virtual uh, reality. Yeah, virtual reality. Right. So I play this game uh, where you put on the heads. You can do all kinds of VR stuff, right? So I'm a VR developer. I basically I sign up to be a VR developer. And what I'm doing, you won't believe this, I do VR LSD. So what? You don't have, so you don't have to do the LSD. <laughs> just put the, just put the just head on. You can virtually try it? Yeah, you, you can put it on. And so what it really is is that VR medicine. Because you take LSD. And basically what you do is you replicate that in the brain. And the brain thinks it's real, it's real. So while you're, out, while you're in the process of doing that, you say, well, what's wrong with you? The body will tell you, well, I'm having this problem, I'm having that problem, and your body, and then you go, that's not a problem anymore. Or mental issues, or right? And, and yeah. so you don't have to do, and then basically you don't have to do any drug because I also can duplicate, you know, uh, uh, doing mushrooms or, or doing any type of drug. You want what drug you want? Well, here it is. Put it on. Uh, you know. And what's the point of getting a drug the next job? You want to do a drug that gives you. Uh, Sam, the guy I told you, the most amazing kid in the world. He's traveling around the world doing wakasia and all these other drugs. And he says these are boring. I says, yeah, you, you're gonna be high, but then then what? Right? <laughs> these are borings. You know. Uh, uh, I forgot what I was talking about. But. Well, you know, I think that that is a good place to end it because yeah, virtual reality, maybe. virtual reality, yes, yeah. LSD is, you know, because it's true. You don't have to use the substance. It's not necessary yeah. because everything is spirit. It's all energy anyway. 
Yeah. And the energy of it, the consciousness of it can interact with you just as easily as the yeah. substance. If yeah. you're able to open to that possibility and let yourself listen instead of being so like closed off and this is how the world is and blah, blah, blah. And I know everything. So don't know everything. <laughs> right. You don't. Realize I you don't. don't. And that's yeah. the difference. Andy here is he learned a long time ago that he doesn't know as much as he thinks he, his ego thinks he knows. And so he's open to learning about all these things. And that's how and it happens every time. Here. As soon as you think, you know, something, wham, something, and you go, oh, wow, great. Thank you. You have to be open to that. See, a lot of times if something hits you in the face, you go, what? But in reality, you should go, wow, thank you. Right? Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> wow. Thank you. Thank right? you for teaching me. Exactly right. Instead of reacting like, theory. oh, my God. Right? And aliens and all this other kind of stuff that Andy's been learning about. So, well, thank you, Andy. For this. And I'd like to come back too, please. Yeah. I, I don't know, you know. <laughs> Can I come back? Yeah, absolutely. And we'll have more fascinating discussions. Thank you so much for for this beautiful conversation. And uh, I know that people can visit you. Is it the invisiblegardener.com? Is that no, the website? No, it's just invisiblegardener.com. Invisiblegardener.com. Invisible Gardener. Yeah, no, no the in front of it. No the in front of it. No the, just invisiblegardener.com. And you can- That's how I got the name, Invisible Gardener, because you know, my energy is not visible when you make things grow. Because all you're doing is you're working with that those that energy, right? When you, and you can walk away, the energy will keep going. The problem is people, destroy the energy right they're constantly destroying you you set something up you go back now what did you do right right and yeah, still doing we'll oh this is you know you know how you put little rocks up on top of each other right that's one way you can tell the energy states so i will make these little rock stats or come back there all over the place i said no no i know if it's just ran through here and destroyed everything right and you have to be able to you know it's called a dragon walk where you can walk a dragon just walk very gently you know people are so unconscious of energy that it's it's amazing so i do this rock thing if it's still there then yeah the energy is cool i miss the earthquake otherwise somebody or something came through here and holy cow and took it nice apart. talking to you you have great yeah, energy by the way. You're, you're very beautiful i love you from a distance and austin's a beautiful beautiful magical place it sure is and yeah, I, I really enjoy our conversations and yeah. Definitely, this is a impactful. Oh, I have a Lots of good you. gold nuggets in here. I have a gift for you, but I just haven't been able. You know, we have fire, we have all this stuff. I haven't been able yeah. to sit down and package it or do anything. I don't have an email. I mean, address or nothing. Because remember, I told you I have a gift for you. Oh, that's right. Did you did say you had a gift for me. No, you didn't say. Well, didn't I ask you you like pearls? And what did you say? I said yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so what you're gonna have to do is these are raw pearls, but you're gonna have to string them. Take him to a jeweler and string him, okay? And these have been specially charged in energy with cosmic super duper energy. And you'll be able to go, oh boy, my God. <laughs> I love that. Thank and it's you. It's been waiting for you. It's been waiting for you. So I just need an address. I don't have an address. All on right, me. I'll give you an address. Okay, you will. Okay, well, nice talking you, to you. Nice talking to you too, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that. Now, Andy, we're going to give everybody kisses. You ready? Okay. You can give your cosmic kisses and I'll I give my hummingbird kiss. kisses. I don't kiss. Well, you can hug or send out light. Send light. Okay, light. Okay, send light. light. You send light. I'm going to send kisses. Here they come. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Have a great day. Same to you, sweetie. Okay?